you do on your behalf. Boy, it's worthy and it's honorable. No, I never ever take any opportunity like this, God. Because I realize it could be someone else standing here where I stand. Lord, I pray. Lord, use this vessel to minister to your people, God. There's some that come in confused. Some have come in with sickness in their bodies. Some have come in misguided. Some have come in ready to throw in the towel. But Lord, use me, Father God, to minister and to bless these your people. Lord, we thank you right now. And we sure enough love you. What is in the mighty, wonderful, and blessed name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. If you will, before you take your seats, turn to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. at verses 34 through 39. Matthew 10, 34 through 39. Mm -hmm. my, my, my. Word of God reads, Do not think that I came to send peace on the earth. I didn't come to send peace but a soul. For I came to set a man at odds against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's foes will be of those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He who loves son or daughter more than me isn't worthy of me. He who doesn't take his cross and follow after me isn't worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. My, my. I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to share with them these words. Neighbor, oh neighbor, the preacher, with the help of the Holy Spirit, We'll preach, we'll preach from the sun. Are, Are you fit to follow? To follow. You may be seated. If you don't have paper and pencil, get it. If you don't have a Bible, yeah. If you haven't opened up the notes on your phone in a while, open them up. If you use our phone to take notes, yeah, to take notes by the text. Just make sure it's on silent. Amen. Why are you telling us all this, Pastor? This will not be a shout to serve. Amen. Unless the Holy Spirit said otherwise. As I shared with you. When we look at the idea of following and understanding the whole concept of what following is. We've got to understand that Christ expects those who have placed their faith in him to follow him. 
And we can call ourselves disciples of Jesus Christ all day long. But really and truthfully, what we say has to match what we do. Because saying you're a disciple and not following contradicts itself. So as believers, we've got to understand that God is not so much concerned about what we say we're going to do. He's more concerned about actually what is in your heart, why you do what you do, and that you do what he tells you to do. When I look in John chapter 10, verses 25 through 27, it says, Jesus answered them, I told them, and he believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not my sheep, as I said unto you. Look at what he told them. He said, my sheep hear my voice. Check it out. And I know them, and they follow me. See, you've got to understand this whole idea and this whole concept of being a, a follower or a disciple of Jesus Christ is not something that we walk around and wear on our chest to impress for. It is a lifestyle. Amen. Whether you're at one or three second row or whatever address you call your home, we are disciples 24-7, 365 days a year. And the question I ask all of us is, are we fit to follow? That's the way you get it. Are we fit? I'm going to share that with you with the text. In verse 34, it says, think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Pastor, that's not very encouraging. Why would Jesus tell his disciples he didn't come to bring peace? Pastor, I prayed for peace, Pastor. I prayed for world peace, Pastor. I prayed for peace for a very long time, Pastor. This contradicts what I've been praying for. But Jesus said, Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Jesus had mercy. You know what the text helped me to realize? Is that when you follow Christ, don't expect everything to go smooth. Because he said that he didn't come to bring peace. He came with a sword so that he can divide. Wait a minute, preacher. Jesus is in the business of dividing. If you hadn't torn out the pages in your Bible, did you realize there's going to be a day when you and I have to stand before the Lord? And what he's going to do is this. He's going to determine sheep from goats. And what he's going to do is, if you're a sheep, he's going to make you move to one side. But if you're a goat, he's going to make you move to the other side. Not based on everything you say, but based on whether the fact, did you follow him or not? Did you obey him? And did you do his will? Do you realize that really and truthfully we do people a, inser, a, a disservice when we share the gospel with them and we make them believe that everything will go peaches and cream? We do them a disservice to make them believe just because they come to Christ that they will never ever have trouble 
or adversity in their lives. But you know what I found out? There are Christians that sit in church every Sunday that actually believe that. Jesus told his disciples, in this life, you shall have tribulation. Not only that, he said, if they persecuted me, I'm going to do like T.D. Get ready, get ready, get ready. All right. And though I didn't watch him this morning, I ain't going to shout like him this morning. That's where y'all are. Amen. But you got to understand that in this life as a Christian, get ready for persecution. Get ready for adversity. Get ready for being mistreated, for standing up for what thus says the Lord. Why? Because you're not exempt from getting the same treatment that Jesus received. So why do we sit and act like when something happens, the world is over? God promised that stuff to happen. You know what we have to do? Just like somebody who knows what's that rain is in the forecast, just bring your umbrella and be ready. But at the same time, I thank God. He said, if we put on a whole armor, we all right. We seek thee first the kingdom, we all right. We know that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We all right. Even though we be beat down, persecuted, and try to die, guess what? We're not defeated. I'm good. But we got to understand that when following Christ, don't expect everything to go smooth. You're going to have persecution. There's going to be adversity. Why? Just because of the name we just sang about. All for the name of Jesus. Who would rather take a stand for Christ? Huh. I'm telling you, trouble coming. Trouble coming. Why? Because you've got to understand, Christ didn't come to bring what? Peace. He came with a soul. What is he doing? He's divine. But he's not doing what some folk do, divide and conquer. He's just divided. Because he's already got the victory. So we have to divide and conquer. He's just divided. Those who do the will of my father, who hear my voice, those who are not. Sheep and go. He came with a sword. He's going to stand as judge. I can talk about you all day long, but you don't have to stand before me. You've got a God to stand before me. Well, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father. What? And the daughter against her mother. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man foe shall be they of his own household. What? No. 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 Pastor, you didn't just read that. It's in your Bible if you had not torn it out. But Rich, you are there. You are there helping with this one. Because I don't understand. I thought God wanted restoration. I thought he wanted to bring things together. I thought he wanted everything to be all right. Yeah, but you got to understand when Christ is in the picture, now a decision got to be made. And everybody won't make the same decision. Ooh, that's why conflict will come. I want you to understand this. Following Christ just may very well bring indifference between you and those close to you. Don't trip if it happens. Don't trip. Don't trip. 
Spirit. Because He already let us know that He came to bring division. Not division to break up, but at the same time, He know in our humanistic ways, some folk won't follow the truth in some form. And there are going to be times in the household where you may have some individuals following Christ, and then you have some individuals who say it don't take all that. Kind of reminds me of brings to mind a situation of maybe a wife who might be saved and a husband that is not. Let me tell you, that can bring some confusion. Pastor, how do you know that? I've seen it with my own eyes. The wife ready to go to church. Matter of fact, getting ready to go to church. Where you going? Mm -hmm. Going to church. Mm -hmm. Going to church. Better start getting it. Not something I heard. Something I see with my own eyes. Heard with my own ears. Getting ready to go to church. Crank the car. Wait up. Going to church. Yeah. See that? You going to run around with a beat and going to pass it yourself. Y'all laugh at it. It's true. It is the truth. It's the truth. And now, She's so frustrated, so you know what, I ain't going to Indifference. You got one trying to go the right way, and you got one trying to go the way, because they know they ain't living up to what they should be living up to. You came to break indifference. That's, that's not real. That's not real encouraging. But you gotta understand this one thing. That your rewards are eternal. Don't be so worried about the criticism and things you receive down here. Know that guess what? One day you got to meet your maker. And God will reward you for the deeds done in the body. Whether good or evil. What? Whether good or evil. Because you see, you've got to understand that God is a God of mercy, but also, you better know that He is a judge as well. And God will one day award you according to your deeds. Verse 37 says this, He that loved his father or mother more than me, this will trip me out, is not worthy of me. Now that, that, that kind of contradicts itself. Honor your mother and your father. When you're here, you're going to be an old mother. No, what you mean? And he that loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's, I don't get that. Let me help you. That has everything to do not with you not loving your loved one. It has everything to you to uh, to do with you having preference to serve Christ over serving people. Because at the end of the day, your child can denounce God what you gonna do. At any given day, mom and daddy can tell you there is no God. Mm -hmm. What you gonna do? You could have been raised in a house where mom and daddy said there is no God. What you gonna do? So it has everything to do with your preference to serve God 
and not the people he put in your life. That's, that's kind of hard. It is, humanistically speaking. Till God had to make me understand it could be me or any of my loved ones could be gone today. Then what? Will I live my life or will they live their life with me or be with them on my heart, causing me not to live, or will I say, to God be the glory? Because I know what they say. They sit pretty good right now. And if they weren't, Lord, show me what I can do so no, no other loved one that I know died over here. Ooh, that's that hard. I don't know. But do you realize what that means is this? There are times in our lives what happens is we hold on to people and we hold on to folks so much. And they have our hearts so much to where God has no room. I love my wife. I love my children. You mess with one of them, it's on. But at the same time, I will never ever let any one of them interfere with my relationship with God. Amen. Huh? He that loveth his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. When do you know you a real follower? When you prefer to serve Christ over serving those who are close to you. Remind me of old school. It's not like that anymore. When folk would come from out of town and visit, if they stayed over Saturday night into Sunday, of course, they might be sleeping, you know, whatever, and it's time to go to church. So, Grandma, I'm getting ready. Well, Grandma, where are you? I'm going to church. Well, we 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 probably going to. Well, I tell you what. Either y'all going to put some clothes on and come with me, or y'all going to stay seat or whatever. Pack your bag, do what you got. To do. I'm going to church. Preference of Christ over those that are. Most of us. Are we fit to follow? No. Jesus, have mercy. But they have been on. It's a hard one. It's a hard one. It's kind of like when people are, are part of a part of a clique. See, there's sometimes at your workplace, um, sometimes uh, even in, in our home, children do that to each other too. You know, I didn't know if you do that. You got kids, because see, you got a few, maybe two, that hook up together and they'll kind of mistreat some of the other. Oh, oh you didn't think that? It's, it's real, y'all. Yeah. I see it every day. It can happen in church too. Mm. Yeah. And what happens is, if you're part of a certain clique, there's certain folk you're not expected to associate with. So what you're telling me is, I ought to be 
It's just like being part of a clique. So what? Christ is saying that I made you. I created you to worship me. I gave you the life you have. Guess what? You are to serve me over the folk that I put in your life to be a blessing. is, he doesn't want you walking around mistreating nobody. He's just saying that if you got a choice between serving him and serving people for the sake of serving people, not because of, you know, his cause, you're not worthy. Verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth it after me he is not worthy of me. Take it not his what? His cross. Take it not his cross. Why do we not remember the cross when we talk about Christianity? You can't have Christianity without the cross. And as a Christian, you got a cross to bear. And the cross wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. The cross wasn't a walk in the park. The cross caused, listen to me good, Christ to lose his life. Oh, that's it. That's, that's, that's it. That's it. See, let, let, me, let me help you out. You're not fit to follow if you have no intention on taking responsibility for being a Christian. You're not fit. You're on one day and you're off the other. You do stuff to try to justify what you've done one day, but then you do other stuff in front of other people. You've got to take responsibility for being a Christian. Amen. It's not an all and off switch. And nothing you go through gives you permission to do anything like God. Nothing. Yeah, you? Nothing. We're not fitted, we're not. We don't have any intention on taking responsibility for being a Christian. That's taking the cross and bringing it everywhere we go. Well, it's kind of like this. It's kind of, it's kind of like it's kind of like this. You think about an American soldier. Okay? When an American soldier signs up for the military, that stand and swear in and swear to do this and serve their country and do this and that. They stand and they swear and they say they're going to do X, Y, Z. But he's not a good soldier if every time you hear him, he's talking about the American government. Mm -hmm. You signed up for this. They paying your way. And as, a, as one of the old, old, old men once told me, he said, give you three hots and a cop. You got nerve enough to talk about it. or operate as if he's not even an American citizen. How dare an American soldier act as if he's not an American soldier? See, you gotta understand a true soldier is not a job. Is in his heart. Because you know why? When artillery start flying, the battle get thick, and things start to get calm, shaky, you know what he's going to do? He's not going to find the exit. He's going to load his gun, 
make sure he got all his gear, and he say, where to fight? That's the truth of it. Why? Because I'm protecting my country. You realize that in Timothy, Paul encouraged Timothy, he said, endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Why are you telling him that? Because he was mad. Timothy, no, you go catch something more. You gonna go through, bruh. But at the same time, don't worry about it. Because God got your back. You got to bear our cross and realize that guess what? It's not nothing to put an S on our chest and walk around where I'm a Christian and I'm saved. No, you got to live this thing. Right. Wherever you go, you got to come to that. Whatever ministry you put in your hand, do the best with it. Whatever calling he has on your life, do it with the passion. Why? Because you're a good soldier. And you know you got to cross the that. Jesus, that verse 39. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life. Check it out, though. You got to get this. You don't get this, you miss it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. That's key. What does that mean? That means that I resign as CEO and realize I'm, I'm part of a bigger corporation than me. He said, for my sake, for Christ's sake, for the gospel's sake. When you found Christ, you found everything. When you gave up your life, your life, to serve Christ, now you're living. Now I'm not talking to folk who try God one day, and if God don't do what they want him to do the next day, God ain't who he say he is. Not talking to you. I'm talking to folk that have been in the battle, been in the storm, been in the rain, and watched God do some stuff time after time after time again. And know that if it had not been for God on your side, you wouldn't be sitting where you sit right now. Amen. See, you're not fit if you can't give up your agenda for God's agenda. You're not fit. It's kind of like this. No, they don't do it very much. But uh, me and Brother Clay was talking the other day. And, uh, he shared with me some things. But you got to understand that when, when on old times, in the old, 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 old times, what they, what they would do is they put a, a, like, a, like almost like a shackle, a cuff on your leg. And they have a chain on it. You have a ball by you. Where you going with this preacher? But you see, as a Christian, you are what you call a bond slave. Wait up. As a Christian, I'm a slave, a prisoner? Yeah. Prisoner for what? For righteousness. And that ball would represent Christ, righteousness, God, who he is, his word, all that he can and will do, all that he's done in your life, all that he will do in the future. And every way you go, when you take one step, when you go to drag the other, oh, I forgot. 
I said, Paul, let me tell you what that'll make you do. That'll stop you from saying some stuff before you say it. That'll stop you from doing some stuff before you do it. Why? Because you're going to always remember that big ball that you got to carry. And you'll think twice about doing certain things. Why? But you know what we do? We don't pray. We don't read the word. We don't spend time with God. We don't seek the first the kingdom. We don't do what we do in remembrance of him. And what ends up happening, we go through our days and our life Forgetting that we should be bond servants. That everywhere we go, we got a burden to bear and a cross to carry. Everywhere we go, how you treat people may be a little bit different. <clears throat> the way you carry yourself may be a little bit different. Because why? It's constantly on your mind. I shared with you a couple of Sundays ago, the blessed man meditates on the word. Thank you. And I. Why? Because he's got to keep it there, not because he's holier than thou, y'all. Mm -hmm. Not because he's all that, y'all. But so he won't do and say some stuff he shouldn't do. All right. So he won't go and go some places he shouldn't go. Well, where you get that from, Pastor? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. All right. <coughs> so the blessed man understand that I can't do some stuff. Can't go some places. I can't hang with some fool. Amen. I did all the change. I say, say to the cross. Say to the gospel. Say to what Christ has done. Not to me. Before I take my seat, I know sometimes I play around. And y'all, it's so thick right now. I want to let you know, I shared with the uh, leaders on yesterday. And share with Sister Kim. God ministered to me on yesterday before I ministered to the leaders. And I'm telling you, they left with something. And that was my prayer. That was my prayer. So I may I may not go where I normally go today because it's, it's it's real right now. First thing I want you to understand is. You don't have to try to fit in to the people. Saying the right prayer. Acting the right way in front of certain people. You don't have to try to fit in to the people. But you give me some scripture with that. I'm so glad you asked. Matthew 15, 7 through 9. Matthew 15, 7 through 9. I'm telling you, Jesus, he, he showed love, he shared love. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus told it like it was. And he did it with a boldness. <coughs> he said, ye hypocrites. Well did Isaiah, which is Isaiah translated, 
prophesied to you, of you rather, saying, This people draw it nigh to me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But look what it says in verse 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Traditions. Where are you going with that? Preaching. Bible says that not everybody that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter and enter the kingdom. What else can you tell the pastor? Some people try to sit in to feel it. Mm -hmm. Well, just because you decided to crank your car, and come to one three second row and sit your behind in the seat that you see. That very act means nothing for God. Why do you have to say that, Pastor? Because I know some folk come to church just because that's all we know. All they know. Been doing it for 40, 50 years, and that's all they know. Know how to sit in, but don't know how to serve. First Samuel 15, 22 through 23. Now, I'm going to share this and, and run the risk of being criticized for. I guess saying what I'm about to say. But anytime the pastor preaches, I'm going to share with you that God gave it to me in a way to where it wouldn't be wise of you to just hear it that Sunday and not study it afterwards. And all you can remember is the title and none of the substance. Verse 7, 15, 22, and 23. All right, verse. Now this is after Sam, uh, Samuel had anointed Saul as king. And God gave Saul some specific instructions to wipe out the Amalekites from top to bottom. Don't take none of this stuff. Matter of fact, demolish everything, including the folk in the country. Now, I don't understand why God allowed kings to do that. That's why I say some stuff you're going to run across in the Bible, you ain't going to understand. God ordered folk to go kill folk? Yes, he did. I ain't telling y'all you know how to do that, so don't sit back and tell me to do that. I'm saying that's how he operated right here. But Saul, with his smart self, he said, well, if we don't take people out, we can at least keep them, take their stuff. But he messed up. Let me help you people of God. When God speaks, he's specific. Very, very definite about what he said. And he told Saul, don't take anything. And Saul decided in his heart that he would. There's a danger in adding to what God told you to do. And now Samuel is addressing Saul, and look what he told him. It says, and Samuel said, that the Lord has great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices 
as in obeying the voice of the Lord. He said he was going to take the animals and offer them up to God and this, that, and the other. But the Lord said, I didn't tell you to do that. Oh, so you're trying to impress me. I already told you what I told you to do. So why you went above me out to try to impress me when I told you this is what I wanted you to do? He says, a burnt offering and sacrifice is more important than listening to what God told me. Mm. Behold, check it out. To obey is better than sacrifice. To hearken than the fat of rams. This is what messed me up, y'all, and I'm telling you, it freaked me out. But God gave me assurance that it's the truth. <coughs> but rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness mm. is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Mm. You need to tell me Saul lost his kingship because he didn't do what God told him to do. Amen. I didn't write it. It's in your mind. All right. What are you saying, Pastor? See, all the stuff you think you're doing to impress God, well, at least I came to church. <laughs> God thought I'd treat you better than that. If you came for me, you in the wrong place. Amen. Amen. I, I hate to break it to you. I hate to break it to you. See, it's a danger in being a part of something by how it necessarily makes you how can I put it? How it makes you feel. That's a danger. Because when you don't feel good, you don't go no more. Right. And you got churches all over the country trying to make folk feel good. Amen. I want to bless you. <clears throat> if I preach something and preach on a sin that you're doing mm -hmm. and it bothers you, yes. <laughs> I've done what God called me to do. If you living all raggy and raunchy and doing all kind of stuff, and I preach something that step on your toes, yes. Amen. 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 That let me know you got the Holy Spirit in you. Because if it don't do nothing for you, oh, I'm scared. Amen. Amen. That means you can do whatever you want, and you don't care what you do. I'm fearful of people that have no conscience. Mm -hmm. All right. And can just do stuff and do stuff Amen. and do stuff and do stuff as if they had done nothing. Right. Ooh, we. I'm fearful of people like that. Amen. You know what that lets me know? They don't do anything. That's right. And they'll go to any extreme to do it. Amen. I know this ain't some of y'all kind of preaching, but I know God gave you this. <laughs> Last thing on the show. God wants to use us to help others to get in to fit. He wants to use you to help others to get in so that they can fit. And when you share what you share with them, and you try to guide them along the way, don't you dare throw away the cross. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. 
You've done them a disservice. Where you going with that, Pastor? Matthew 9, 36 through 38. Matthew 9, 36 through 38. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. We ought to have compassion on those who don't know the Lord. I know that God placed me where he placed me on the job I'm on. And I do believe that he's, it's still my season to be there. But he's showing me that that season may be coming to an end there. Don't go work, run around, that's my pretty job. I don't come with it. <laughs> but I know that he placed me there where I am for a reason. Because every day I walk into work, I look at the misguided. I look at the let down. I look at the ones who've been thrown away. I look at the ones that have been neglected. I look at the ones that nobody else wants to be bothered with. I look at those who didn't come up like me. I had a mother and father who loved me dearly. And every night I came home, I could expect them to be there. And if my dad wasn't there, he was off work at some point. And I see children, single parent homes. And sometimes mama don't know what to do. So she do whatever she thinks she can do or thinks she should do. I look at young men who are looking for a strong male figure to guide. I look at young women who've been misguided and have a no clue as to what being a woman is. As Christians, you all have a heart. Those who are lost. crazy part about it is I see co-workers who are misguided, who are misled, who don't know the Lord, who don't have a clue, who think they did them but ain't living, who think they got it together but don't have it together. And you would think that I have more trouble with the children. I have more trouble with the adults. And I told my wife the other day, I said, sweetie, this is just my season. Fool around and let the Lord elevate you. And you better get ready. Fool or mistreat you for no reason. No reason at all. And if you ask them, they can't find no just cause. Uh -huh. But I see people who are inside, confused, coming on their way. And Christ looked at them and he said, As sheep have no Then he said unto his disciples, The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers unto his harvest. He wants to use us to get others <coughs> into the kingdom. How dare we sit around? Like there's no harvest. 
has nothing to do. Like there's nobody that's lost. Like God did command us to go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As if God never said, how dare we do that? But we'll come Sunday after Sunday and shout ourselves at it. But won't be compassionate on those who are lost. Some folk, they don't want your help. You got to get that. But at the same time, the same one that don't want your help at one moment, life has a way of happening to where that'll be the very same person that knocks on your door. And it'll be the same person that comes to you and asks you to pray for them. Huh? Did I tell you something I heard? Tell you something I know. So God wants to use us to get others in so that they can be fit as well. But I'm going to leave you with this. If you're not fit, how will you get others to be able to? Are you fit to follow? I want y'all to leave here challenged. I want you to leave here from me. I want you to leave here searching your heart. I ain't saying every sermon is going to be like this, but this is what God put in my heart. Because you got to understand this Christian journey is not a fret or a sorrow.